After an in-depth tutorial about green screen backgrounds and lighting in the first two videos of this series, I will tell you my insider tips about green screen camera settings. In regard to the camera, I may surprise you. For the best possible green screen results, I would either use a camera with an APS-C size sensor or set your full frame camera to record only APS-C. But you have to use a full frame lens for that camera. Why is that? Have a look at this sample shot. This green screen is 100% perfectly lit. I even used my light meter to meter the light up into the corners. But when you look at it, it has dark edges. That's the natural vignetting of camera lenses. So the lens projects less light into the corners of your sensor than into the center. And getting rid of that vignette means you have to key more aggressively and that might eat into hair, clothing, etc. And now have a look at the same shot recorded with an APS-C sensor. All I did was step back to keep the framing. The difference is substantial. Yes, I am aware that a smaller sensor would create more noise, but that doesn't quite compensate for the vignetting problem. And talking about vignetting, let me get to the next setting you need to change in your camera. Lens correction. Let me show you this example shot with an APS-C sensor size, with lens correction activated and with lens correction deactivated. And here to show you how dramatic these settings affect your green screen keying altogether, this is a full frame camera shot with lens correction deactivated and for comparison an APS-C shot with lens correction activated. So keep that in mind. Talking about cameras in general, shooting in 4K resolution is a big bonus. It has four times the detail of 1080p, also called Full HD, and therefore improves green screen keying a lot. In case you can't afford a 4K camera, what you can do is shoot in portrait orientation. That way you almost get the same vertical resolution than with 4K. That obviously limits how much you can move around or move your hands, but it helps when you just want to play the talking hand. The second thing you want to keep in mind in regard to camera choice, if you want to move around in your room, which you would if you have a bigger room, you want a camera that has reliable autofocus and ideally face detection. That way you can make sure that the camera doesn't lose focus. I personally use the Sony a7 III and the a7 IV, and while the a7 IV that is currently filming has better focus in general, I hardly ever have any issues with the a7 III when it comes to recording green screen. The next thing is lens focal length choice. That obviously depends on your room size, but in general, the best results can be achieved with a focal length of around 35 to 55 mm. If you set your camera to APS-C, if you decide to shoot full frame, then it's around 50 to 85 mm. If that is confusing and you want to know more about full frame versus APS-C, let me recommend this video here that I will link in the description. As I said in video 2, it also helps if the focal length you use for filming the green screen is the same that you use to film the background video that you're going to key in. However, if you're filming in a small room, you have no other choice than shooting with a wider lens. If you need help to choose the perfect lens for your green screen and room size, drop me a note in the comments. Now to the exposure settings. First, you want to set your camera to manual exposure. Otherwise, the camera will constantly change the brightness level and that will obviously change the brightness of the green screen. You know that we need an even screen, so changing the brightness is an absolute no-go. You also want to set white balance manually for the very same reason. Setting it to daylight usually works very well unless you want to use a sunset as your background. Then you may have to reconsider. But back to exposure, or in other words, image brightness. First, what shutter speed do you need? The quick answer is 1 100th of a second, if you live in a country that uses the television standard PAL or SACOM, and 1 120th of a second if you live in a country that uses the television standard NTSC. Google your country and television standard or drop me a question in the comments if you're not sure. If you're an experienced videographer, don't be surprised about that relatively high shutter speed. The standard setting for regular video won't give you good results for green screen work. You can try that if you want, but let me quickly show you a clip with 1 50th of a second and now a clip with 1 100th of a second. Have a look at the fingers. Can you see the green spill that is caused by motion blur? I guess you now understand why a faster shutter speed is better for green screen. Next is aperture.
Next is aperture. Even the brightest lights are nowhere near as bright as sunlight outdoors, so you want to set the aperture to a rather low but not extremely low number. I usually use f5.6 on my high quality zoom or prime lenses. Compare this shot at f5.6 to this shot at f4. Can you see the difference at vignetting? Have a look into the corners. Let me recommend to do tests with the lens that you use to get the best results. And that leaves us with ISO. That's your only real variable. You have to set it to a value that would give you a decent, well-lit footage. That obviously depends on the lights you used in the end. Brighter lights will let you choose a lower ISO than not so bright lights. But when deciding on the lights, always keep in mind that bright lights glare your subject. It's really hard to look into the camera when the lights are glaring like crazy. I usually have to set ISO 800 with the setup I showed you in the previous video. And since exposure settings are all about light, we need to talk about the background lights again. In the previous video I told you that a brighter background is better than a darker background. But how bright does it have to be? Here's my recommendation. For shots with bald people or shots that include a lot of bright skin, I'd recommend to set the brightness of the lights in a way that when you spot me to the background only, you'd get an exposure reading of minus one third. That way you don't get too much spill on the skin. For people with darker skin, that is also a good setting to avoid a too bright halo around the body. For people with blonde or brighter gray hair, I'd go with an exposure reading of plus one third. My Nanlite FS150s that have 150 watts of LED light are powerful enough to get me that brightness. I just have to adjust the power settings. So keep that in mind, a 30 or 60 watt light might not give you enough brightness. What if your lights aren't all that bright? Well, then you have to raise the gain, which is ISO, because as I said, that's your only real variable when it comes to green screen lighting. That would introduce noise, but a bit more noise is better than a badly lit green screen. Now you may wonder, but if I raise my ISO, my main light, so the light on the subject and my key light will become too bright. Of course it will, but every light usually has power settings, so you can dial the power of your main light down to balance all the lights with your camera settings. Before we get to replacing your green screen with a more attractive background in your editing software, let me give you two more bonus tips. Once you have set the camera, I'd recommend doing a test video, bringing it into your editing software and see how it looks before you record long green screen videos. And another tip, note all the settings as well as your complete light setup with measurements, including the power settings. That will save you a lot of time for your next green screen shooting and make sure you deliver consistent results. And talking about results, it's finally time to bring your footage into your editing software. Watch this next video for my editing secrets that might surprise even very advanced videographers.